All right, this comes in from uh, David in Roswell, who yes. wants to know, my brother and I manage a trust for the estate of my father and my mother, who is still living. Okay. A buyer wants to purchase the property with a seller financing? Yes. Is that okay, And what are the pros and cons of this? So let's set the scenario up, Alfie. So let's put you in the position of David. Okay. I'm you David. own a property. Let's say, now, your parents are still alive. Correct. Love it. They're fantastic people. Yes, they're amazing. But let's just say that you were having to sell property for them. So, and let's okay. say that they don't owe anything on it, more than likely. All right. Because I think that's actually the situation. Correct. Uh, and let's say the buyer comes to the table and the buyer wants to have your mom and dad finance the property for them and make payments. Normally, they do it for a few years and then there's some type of balloon payment. So let's say they come and ask for your parents to finance it for three years. And a lot of times it's because the buyer does not have the ability currently to qualify for a loan. Let's just say you were going to sell something and get $250,000 in proceeds. Okay to use that as an example, Alfie? Yeah, sure. So if your parents were to get the $250,000 and they put it in the bank, they can't make any money. But if they were willing to sell or finance, they might be able to make five or six percent on their money. Ah, okay. Here's the things that I would think about, David. Number one, make sure you get a sizable down payment. All right. What is that number? Yeah, that is a it's a big enough number that they are scared to lose it. Would there, so would, I wish I could. Would tell you recommend you, like a percentage? Ideally, twenty percent. Okay. But in some cases, let's say you could get you know a ten percent, so you get twenty five thousand on your two hundred fifty thousand dollar purchase. That might be enough to make the buyer think Work twice gotcha. about walking away from it. I got gotcha. number two. I would make sure you understood, David, everything you need to know about the buyer's financial background. Who's going to be on the mortgage? Who are the purchasers? Who will be on the mortgage when they refinance it? Meaning like they'll have to refinance it within three years in this case and get a real mortgage on it. What are the credit scores today? What are the employment situations, the income? What are the debt to income ratios? And if the buyer cannot qualify today, I would ask for a, listen to this Alfie, a written plan from the buyer as to where they were today in all their financial situation and what they needed to do to get themselves in a position to finance. Yeah. Your main thing is, does this person have the ability to pay? Correct, yeah. Good can point. they pay and can they get themselves in a situation to finance it on their own when the time comes? So where are you, where are you today? Where do you need to be in order to finance it yourself? And what are the steps that need to be in place? One last thing, David, I'd like to mention. The seller financing first mortgage exhibit gives the buyer the obligation to pay for the closing cost. If the buyer pays for the closing cost, then technically the buyer would be paying for the note to be drawn, the promissory note, and the security deed, which in Georgia is the same thing as a mortgage. Okay. Now, I don't know about you, Alfie. Yes, sir. Yeah, turn your microphone. You know yes, how that I, works, Mr. Technical I, yes, Producer? Uh, so, but I don't know about you, but yeah. if I'm loaning somebody $250,000, i am going to have my attorney prepare mm -hmm. those documents. Makes sense. So my suggestion for you, David, would be to have your attorney prepare the documents for the buyer to sign. The promissory note and the security deed, and I would hire an attorney, pay him $500 or $600 bucks if you need to uh, in order to do that. Mm -hmm.